get ready. Good night, everyone, for another episode of Dan Does Data. Tonight, rather than looking at a piece of data software or a particular data set and problem, we're going to look at the workflow that I use. Uh, several people have commented over the course of the past year or so asking, what is this system that you're using? Is this some kind of fancy IDE? This is a weird version of the terminal. What is this? Uh, so I want to sort of explain what it is and most more importantly, how to get it up and going in Ubuntu, a popular Linux distribution. You can certainly get it going in any Linux di distribution that you like. And so I'm currently installing a Ubuntu virtual machine, just taking a little bit longer than I like. Uh, just to demonstrate what the heck I'm talking about, this is the environment I mean, where I've got Tmux panes left and right, and I'm doing all kinds of wacky stuff. So I can have some code over here, and you're going to see me in just a second open that up. Let's kill those. So you can say import numpy as np, and like movie magic, it will appear on, oh snap. But then I sent that to the wrong place. Oh my goodness. That's embarrassing. <laughs> oh my gosh. There we go. Something gone. Alright, take two. So you can import NumPy as NP, and like magic, it will appear on the left there. I was actually sending it over here where I'm running some streaming software. Totally not where I wanted it to go. Uh, but then you can work in whatever your system is. Whatever, however you want to work, whatever you want to code you like want to do. Uh, so you can say numpy.a range, I don't know, 100, whatever. And it appears on the left. And you might say, I can type on the left too. Yeah, but what if I want to change this now to 200? Boom, now A is that. Whereas over here, I'd have to go over here and come back, and oh, I can make it 300. Right, but it's not a fully featured text editor in IPython. In Vim, it is a fully featured text editor. So I've got a for loop for I in range 12, say, and I want to say, oh yeah, B equals numpy dot. A range of I plus 10. I don't know, whatever you're going to do, it doesn't really matter. Or in fact, let's just print. Look at how easy this is. And then you can do that. Oh, you get a nice cool lines. If you wanted to change things here, I'd have to hit the home key, go back, or change my read line library around. I don't have all the tools that I like to have in the IPython environment. But in Vim, I have all the tools I'm ever going to want. And if I want to do a selection like that, or I just want to send one line, or I want to send two lines, or however many lines I want to send. I can do that. That's sort of the core of this workflow. Uh, we're using Tmux, we're using Vim, and what connects these two is uh, Slimux, a fancy plugin. It's really not all that fancy. Essentially, you just use some Tmux command lines uh, to send whatever you have in a particular Vim buffer to a particular pane, that pane being one you're going to be interested in, like on the left, running IPython, or R, or GNU Debugger, or whatever. Okay, but I want to show you how to get that set up, because it's not the most obvious things. It's not quite as bad as the Jenga Tower of Dependencies, uh, but it's not necessarily obvious. And while this is still running, this is still installing, I will show you that I've got some things to help you get going. So if you're not sure if you're still not sure what this is, I have like an ebook or a website that you can check out. Uh, just dvbuntu.github.io slash compute will take you there. Uh, it'll sort of explain what the heck this thing is. It'll say why this is relevant with some simple code examples. And it'll go through each component like what is IPython? What is it good for? What is Tmux? What is that good for? What is Slimux? Why do I even need that? And then sort of overall, what is this workflow? What are your options for putting together a workflow if, if you're going to do it intentionally? And some alternatives to the workflow. Last week or two weeks ago, I don't remember now, but I recall we looked at Jupyter. Talk about that. 
And if you say, this is cool, I need more people to show me that, I can help help you train. This isn't a marketing video right now, not yet. Uh, but that's just, this page has a lot of information that I've put together. And further, uh, because I find myself reinstalling things on a tragically regular basis, I've got a uh, GitHub repo set up to help me install all the things that I like for my environment. Uh, to include Tmux, Vim, IPython, uh, but also a bunch of other things I like in my environment. So like I have to have Git to do my my things, I gotta have NumPy, uh, I have to have ZShell and I like to use Firefox. Uh, Chrome is fine too, whatever you wanna like. So I have like a sort of a simple shell script that will just go through and grab all the things that I want. It grabs my dot .files, which I also keep in another GitHub repo. So you can clone that if you want and use my dot .files. I mean, that's essentially what I did. I cloned a friend of mine's dot .files and changed them to be things I like. That is dangerous because you might encounter a line you don't know what it does, but that's the nature of the beast. How's this going? Okay. Standard system. Uh, yeah, continue. I gotta make sure I don't miss any of these things and hopefully it doesn't take too, too much longer. I have to keep this eye, an eye on this in the background. So, what are we gonna do? Let me walk you through the steps and then we'll actually run them so it doesn't seem so, so jarring when I just go and do that. So, we're gonna install a baseline Ubuntu and then I'm going to grab this script. Really, I'm going to grab this repository, dvbuntu slash compute dash tools. Sort of all the tools you need to do compute, a guide to effective computing. It's all about branding, got to keep that up. Uh, basically, it starts to say, hey, where the heck is this script running? Because that's where we're going to start working on things. Make sure we come back to this place. First, uh, we're going to make a directory in your home directory just for downloads. We're going to grab some things we need to download just in case. I always like to have that. That's where I like to download any things I, I happen to need. Then I've got like a bash list of packages that come in Ubuntu that you can install pretty easy. And this, what, this just loops through them and installs. So sudo apt get update to make sure you've got the most recent copy of the repository you're looking at. If you're installing Ubuntu fresh, this is a particularly important if you're like you have an old CD, your dump drive, and it's an older copy of Ubuntu. And so like the bash syntax is a little weird, uh, but like for in this array packages, you're gonna install each thing. And it'll ask you for your password once, and I have to remember, I made up a funky password for this, so I have to remember what that is. We'll, we'll see if I, I can. Once you have all these baseline packages, all the, the X term is the terminal that I like, uh, git for getting software and doing version controlling, Tmux for multiplexing my terminal, having multiple terminals uh, on screen at once that I can quickly swap between. Of course, my Python stuff. Pip, py, Python 3 pip, so I can install things. Vim, because that's my favorite text editor. Zshell, because I like it more than Bash, it's a little bit nicer. And Firefox, because it's a good browser. Right, after installing all those, then you use pip. You use pip itself to upgrade pip. You say, hey pip, get a better pip. Not too crazy. Uh, then I make sure to grab my dot .files to set every, my shell up the way that I want with all the things that I want. After doing that, well, this, this just downloads it. I haven't actually used, installed it yet or anything. We'll get to that later. I have to use, grab the oh my Z shell, which is a fantastic way to set up uh, your Z shell. It has lots of themes and all this other cool stuff. And this line just changes your actual shell to say, hey, start using Z shell from now on. Uh, finally, I that dot .files, that's a directory that I created up here when you clone it. I check out the Ubuntu uh, line, the Ubuntu, not line, excuse me, the Ubuntu branch of the repository. Make sure I've got the most recent copy, which I really ought to. That really shouldn't be a problem, but whatever. And then I just say, hey, run this install script. What is that? If we come over to the dot .files repository, on branch Ubuntu, you can see that. Let's double check this. Okay, still got a little ways to go. Ugh, man. I started that as soon as I could when I got home from work, but it was not quite fast enough, and I wanted to set it up earlier, did not get around to it. Oh well. Could have done it online with various sites, I guess. Anyway, 
This is just essentially going to symbolically link all my various dot files in your into your home directory saying hey from this downloads dot files place put the link so my Z shell setups my vim setups my Theano setups some of these are old and left over from when I was running uh, Arch Linux like X and RC I don't think I need to fuss with anymore X term I think I do still need that that's to set up your X terminal uh, settings like font size colors and all this stuff why it's not an actual dot file I don't know that irritates me uh, get ignored say hey don't try to add these files by default to a git repository my ipython profile my history and all that stuff things i like more ipython config and then it goes back home basically it just copies all these files over and by copies i mean it symbolically links so that if i update the repository and i pull that down i get that all instantaneously all right let's continue walking down there isn't much left and we'll hopefully ah Install grub bootloader in the master sure, do what you gotta do. Ugh, soon Ubuntu, soon. I'm a little irritated that it's taking a little bit of time. Setting users and passwords almost. Alright, we'll move this over. Oh, ah, here we go. If you've never installed Ubuntu on your own, it's a good thing to do. It's like easier than ever. It's essentially hitting a lot of enter these days. Um and I've I used to run Arch Linux. Should you go to school for computer science? I encourage going to school, yes. I think that is something you should do. Uh, you're gonna learn a lot of incredible things and you will also learn programming on your own. So highly recommend it. I, uh, was it, I think it was just last week I was talking with some some Cub Scouts trying to explain the self-driving car project to them, and they were asking, like, oh, how do I get involved in programming? I'm like, learn Python. Uh, if you're at the point where you're going to college or university, uh, I recommend, yes, going to school. Don't You don't necessarily have to study computer science. Let me rephrase that. Uh, I studied engineering and mathematics, and depending who you ask, I turned out fine. So computer science, perfectly good subject. If you want to get into machine learning and other stuff like that, if you want to study a particular field, uh, that is also completely reasonable. Like, I studied civil engineering because I wanted to study traffic and bridges and all kinds of things. Uh, and, like, soil. I was really into, like, soil and rocks at the time. One of those things. Or study mathematics and get really into the computing aspect of things that way. Or, actually, uh, if you study one of the liberal arts fields but you get involved in a lot of uh, technical things, you can do a lot of damage. This is concerning to me now. It's asking me to set this all up again, and I feel like I already did. Oh, shoot, I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no. It's trying to install again. That's not what I wanted to do. Hang on. Oh, let me kill that. Uh, power off the machine. So I need to actually... <laughs> I was trying to... I, like, had forgot to remove the CD, essentially. And by essentially, I mean literally, I have an actual CD with Ubuntu on it. Okay. Sorry about that. These are real things that really happen. Now we've installed Ubuntu. Should be good here. That's what I get for not really, not really paying attention to what it was saying. Okay, Ubuntu's loading 16.04. Uh, oh boy, what was the name? Yes, haha! -ha. I don't have a graphical environment? You've got to be kidding me. This is distressing. I could have sworn that I had this. Strictly speaking, we don't actually need any of that to make this work. Strictly speaking, I do not need that kind of environment to make it just make my life a lot easier. No? Seriously? Did I not install this stuff? That's so strange. Uh, let me double check something real quick here. Ubuntu Start X, maybe? 
No, I just... Ubuntu GUI? How do I start GUI from the command line? Normally it's like it's start X or something like that, but if I did not install it... Ah, here we go. Oh, do I not have... I don't know, the paste. I can't paste from host to the virtual guest. I'm really tempted to just do it from from command line. Two gigs? I really don't want to download two gigs. No, forget it. We'll just do it all from command line. It's fine. Everything's fine. This is fine. Do I have wget? I do have wget. Do I have curl? I do not have curl. Okay, that's fine. This I can work with. Because all I need is this script, really. This I don't even need this whole repository. I just need this script. So let me raw. Alright, so where am I? Right there. So let's W get that script. This should not be too terrible. Yeah, install Ubuntu desktop. I don't want to install two gig I don't want to download two gigs of stuff right now live. This is why I should have had set up earlier. But that's okay. You don't need a graphical environment to make this work. And sometimes I use Tmux just in the pure terminal mode. Ubuntu slash init dot shell. Let's grab that. Bam, there we go. Okay. Uh, so, I should chmod 770 and dot shell. And now you should be able to just see in it dot shell. See, this yells at me. It's got an update. It says, hey, I need these things. Because it's. That's probably for X term. Can I make this bigger? Do I want to make this bigger? Apparently not. Yeah, we're just gonna go pure pure terminal, I guess. That's that's more fun this way. System would work exactly the same uh, in a in a GUI. X term is will not be something that we're actually running uh, because X term is for using a terminal in the X graphical environment. But it works all the same way essentially. Wow, that was. I could have sworn that got installed by default. Oh, you know what? I think that the CD that I had only uh, it had the minimal install because I didn't want to because that's the only way to make it fit on a CD anymore. That's what it was. So now we're just installing each little bit here. Python 3-numpy. <coughs> uh, Firefox might depend on some graphical environment stuff. So that might, you might not like that. Uh, we're gonna find out. Uh, this is pip. I really should just say, hey, installing X. Should have had that. Uh, question from the audience, what was the server? I'm not, I'm, I'm trying to get just us.archive.ubuntu.com, standard us uh, one. I just didn't want to download two and a half gigs live because I'm uploading video at the same time I'm trying to download other things. And I'm also downloading the video on another computer just for checking things. It's, it's, it doesn't, it, it would not end well, would not end well, guaranteed. Uh, da, 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 da. But yeah, so it prompts you for each one, so it's not, you don't just run it and walk away. You can, of course, have it like that, but I, this is the kind of thing that I don't do all the time, so it's perfectly reasonable for me to run, check, and keep checking it, making sure it is what it is. And today, I haven't run it in a couple months, actually, since I upgraded this computer. Was your install image a server image? Oh, for the Ubuntu disk. I don't think it was. I think it was just a very empty. It could have been. I don't actually remember. It very well could have been. Well, 
Let me see if I can find that information. Let's do minimal 16.04. I'm using 16.04 instead of 16.10 uh, because 04 was, I believe, the long-term support version, Xenial Zeris. Netboot option, alternative downloads. I don't think it was a netboot option. Alternative downloads, network installer. No, 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 no. Do, 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 do. Minimal CD, oh, minimal CD, hey, wait a minute. How old is this page? Oh no, this is recent. Wow, 54 megabytes, that's crazy. Download package around like ours, installation time, set of printing the media itself, yada yada yada. So this is probably what I had. I probably had the minimal CD option. Although really, like, this could fit on a much smaller space even. And it's always amazing to me, like, the bloat that occurs, that inevitably, as you march up in version number, the size increases. Never down. One of those uh, truisms. Oh well. You yeah, know, this is where, like, uh, if I had a zip disk, this would be fantastic. I could fit that on there, carry it around, change it real easily. I mean, yeah, you could have a USB drive too, but zip disk would be fun. Still installing. Python 3.5, taking its time, taking its time. Ugh, did not expect that to take that long. Although I'm glad I was able to, to get this without too much pain, even without copy-paste. wget. Uh, so there's another, another script in this compute tools that, rather than setting up the basic environment, tries to set up some kind of machine learning environment. And it tries to do this for assuming you have a GPU. Catch is, I believe it's tuned to like whatever hardware I happen to have. Uh, and Ubuntu specifically. So it's like you need all these weird packages to make it all work. These different NVIDIA CUDA things, these different NVIDIA particular drivers. Uh, once you get all that going though, oh yeah, then you gotta set up GCC the special way, get the right version. This is the part of the Jenga Tower of Dependencies of machine learning. Is bloat more costly when instantiating a VM? Question from the audience. Uh, I don't think it really makes a difference, and I, I say bloat, I really shouldn't say that because like hard drive space is cheap, and it gets cheaper every year. And there's going to be more useful packages uh, than there were previously, so maybe bloat wasn't the right word. Just I always find it interesting that like lines of code always increases, and compiled size always increases. But I certainly had the same problem if you look at my repositories, uh, a lot more additions than deletions. Anyway, so this machine learning script tries to go through and install the correct things. And then it says, hey, install Theano and Keras using Python by just doing pip3 to install. And if you've already done this, the regular install with NumPy and all this other stuff and the CUDA install, this should work. Uh, but I think I never got this script working quite right. What's the blame here? Some machine learning tools. All right, I just have one script then. Never mind. Whereas, like, what's the blame on this? I love this blame feature. So you can see for a particular line who added it and what when the commit was done and, like, what the message was. That's just, that's just so neat. I like that. Do you want to continue? Yes, I want to continue. Keep going, keep going. 30 megs, 30 megs. What are we installing right now? I really should have looked at that. Vim. We're installing Vim because Vim is excellent. BI improved. Yes, keep going. We will. What are we on? Z shell. Z shell, also pretty quick. I might just tell it not to install Firefox. Yeah, don't even bother. Because we're just in a uh, basic environment here. There we go. Uh, curl, command not found. So I just got burned. Where's our curl? There's no curl here. Oh, there's curl in here, isn't there? In here. 
There's not curl. Where does trying to curl happen? I don't understand. Oh, it's down here. That's where I got burned. That is where I got burned. Where am I now? I'm still in Danda's data. Oh, it's actually empty. This is what happens. Sometimes things... Sometimes things break a little bit. Because I don't have curl actually installed. So if you come over here, cloning into Slimux. So I had Slimux. Where does Slimux get installed? Uh... No Emacs? No, I'm a Vim user, and this this whole setup uses Slimux, which is a, a Vim plugin. Emacs actually has a similar kind of mode, I believe, uh, but it's not one that I. Uh, but I'd have to like I'd have to learn Emacs if I wanted to try that mode. All right. ls.vim Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, so I need to change that curl line. So I have vim. Let me change... init.shell. Yeah, that's fine. wget should be fine. You just do that and so now I have to set this up just so move pathogen.vim uh, dot vim slash bundle. Now I have to remember where this goes. Which means like, I have to look at my own own directory. cd dot vim is it in bundle? It is in bundle. That should be hunky dory then. But if I try to run this whole thing again, it might yell at me, although it might just be fine. Let's find out how reasonably protected this is. It's got to fetch the whole list again. It's going to say, hey, all this stuff is already installed. I'm going to say, no, don't install Firefox. Got to put in my password here. Fatal already exists and it's not an empty directory. Yeah, well that's fine. All right, so I have it. I got got that stuff. Evil mode they call it in Emacs. You know I'm not familiar with that. I'm going to spend two seconds and learn about that right now. Emacs evil mode. Like if this is already part of Emacs and like if only I had learned Emacs first. Extensible VI layer. What provides Vim features like oh I see I see. That's, well, that's just silly. I should just use VI if that's the case. And now I understand why they call it evil mode. That's, that is cute. Interesting. Uh, from Vim to Emacs in 14 days. Oh, that's going to take a lot longer than 14 days. Almost guaranteed. Almost guaranteed. Okay, so I've got all my Z shell stuff. All the stuff ran. I've got dot files. Notice all the dot bash rc, the dot gshell rc, all this jazz. So we're just going to exit. And we're going to log back in. And now we have a z shell, which is not exactly working. It should be, I say this, yeah, that's not exactly working, I notice. Yeah. 
error detected while processing this. Pathogen infect. Invalid expression. Pathogen infect. So I notice pathogen is not working, which is irritating. So a couple things are not working. Here's a report. Is Tmux working? Tmux is working. Yeah. Uh, import numpy is np. Forgot about the evil mode. Just use space max. It's the greatest. Oh man. No, I'm firmly a member of the the cult of VI. I'm afraid you will not convert me. Not an editor command. Curses. So my vim is not not set up quite correct. Nor is my z shell, and I suspect that, that is the problem. And I feel like I've had this before, this issue. And I want to blame. I want to blame oh my z shell. So let's see what I can do about that. Because I'm using different themes here then in in my thing. Uh, let's use straight VI. There we go. CSHRC. Home Dan does data dot oh my z shell. That's normal. Dot oh my z shell. Let's change the theme. I don't think that's a big deal. Equals Cardan. Which plugins would you like to load? I think those are all the same. Source. Oh, oh I didn't even have that. Plugins. Git. Git fast. Wow, I didn't realize I had all these other things in here. When did I do this? Get fast, get extras. Why is this not part of my... Arr. Let the Jenga begin. <laughs> uh, Kilo, Kilo Sierra Alpha says, use Vim for 10 years, but SpaceMax uses the same commands and it's built on Emacs. All right, that is something to consider. Uh, but can I still do this slimeuxy thing? That's really the question. If I if I can't do that, then, uh, then it's not going to cut it for me. That's that's the catch. If this is existing, then do that. What is that? I don't know. Remove this stuff. There we go. There is no oh my z shell that shell. Let the Jenga begin. Oh gosh, it's I swear it wasn't supposed to be this way. It wasn't supposed to be this way. Bunch of aliases that I like. Those all my aliases should still be here. Da, 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 da. Is this oh this doesn't actually have my my Z shell. My Z shell got overwritten. That's the problem. That's the problem. I got the order of things a little mixed up. I need to go into downloads, dot files, dot z cell, and put that over. And now, haha! Look at that. All right, so that was a problem. I need to add. You know, I'm gonna add that line right now. In proj. Yes, in this uh, directory is where I keep like my local copy. First of all, this is just bw git. We change this right now. This is good. Otherwise, we go crazy. And and slash move pathogen. No, this should be wherever pathogen is. Pathogen dot vim to dot vim slash bundle. There we go. And then I want to copy slash dot files slash dot z shell to home. There we go. 
Otherwise, I'm going to go bonkers. Okay. Head back to Z shell RC. After oh my Z shell. Okay. But I call this a DevOps lesson. I would not say I do DevOps, because otherwise I'd be using proper tools like Puppet or something else. This is more for setting up your home, home desktop kind of stuff. Ah, it's still not, still not behaving. So what did I do wrong is the question. So my shell is set up correctly now. Um, and I can call Vim, but of course Pathogen, which is a Vim plugin manager thing, still doesn't want to work. And we are, we're at 35 minutes, we got, we're doing well. Bundle, Slimux, Pathogen.Vim. But that's supposed to be a directory. There, buddy. Yeah. Dot vim slash. Yeah, that's that's not even supposed to be in there, is it? It's supposed to be an auto load. Auto load. Yep, my mistake. Put it in the wrong place. Move dot vim slash bundle slash pathogen to dot vim slash auto load. Oh, it's good to know that this would be useful for DevOps type people. It's like I know a couple of DevOps types of folks, but I admit like that's kind of a field that uh, sideline that I'm not just not very familiar with as far as like what it what counts as DevOps, what is DevOps and what is not DevOps. There we go. So yes, it helps if I install things in the correct location. Uh, da, 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 da. So now you can import NumPy as NP, for example. This little business will come up. Make sure you use the Vim style, like J and K, to go up and down. Oh, Kilo says pathogen is old, not a, not actually updated. Vim plug is better. All right, I will definitely check out Vim plug at some point. I might even do that tonight. Boom! Look at that. We just we just did it. We uh, sent some things magically to the left. Magic! Boom. And we are still just in a regular terminal environment. This is just one terminal here. That's all. We have not installed any GUIs, nothing. We just have Tmux, which is beautiful. So if you're in a really uh, low resource environment or you don't want to, you don't want to install this graphical stuff, you, or like there's no, you can do that. You can make it happen here. And you could still do all this, and you have whatever you have in Python. Now, plotting with like matplotlib is not going to work so well because uh, you don't have a graphical environment. If you have a GNU plot that has an ASCII art version, and you can make that work. Um, I don't use that at home much, uh, but that that can be a good way to do things. And I have used ASCII art plots like that before because often like that strips away a lot of the extraneous information. It's just like, there's an object here or there's not. So that can be a really cool thing to do. So yeah, this is how, if, if you've seen me work, this is how I tend to work. I'm gonna push the update to that script. I'm gonna fix that again right now. Um, and then it'll be even, even easier to use. Auto load, auto load, there we go. Add this up again. Commit. Fix install of pathogen. And push. So, if anyone has like any specific questions about how the environment works, here we're just doing it in pure terminal, of course. Uh, or anything that they think might be helpful. Uh, I have a version for Ubuntu. And I also have a version for Arch Linux because that's what I was initially using. Uh, Arch is on the master branch because that's what I was using first. Uh, Ubuntu gets the Ubuntu branch, of course. And so this should 
set up most of the environment for you. As you can see, like after Ubuntu finally installed, that took less than 30 minutes to, to get going with a basic data science kind of environment on whatever your favorite system is. So not too complicated. Any thoughts on i3? If you mean the uh, like Intel i3 processor versus other processors, uh, I'm afraid that I have to say no, I have no thoughts on the matter. I'll be honest, I look mainly at clock speed if I'm really worried about it. And if I'm at the point, I have to work really hard to get to the point where the processor speed is what's slowing me down. Uh, almost always there's better optimizations I can be doing. I3WM, I feel like I know what that is. I'm gonna look it up right now. I'm gonna look like an idiot. Like, why don't you know what that is? Improved tiling window manager, okay. So when I ran Arch Linux, I did use, I used Openbox, uh, another window manager. And I really, really liked Openbox for a long time because I was able to implement keyboard commands to bounce around from one window to the next based on my position. So I might have Firefox open in part of it and then a terminal open in another part and I could say, hey, control A, right, and move over there. Uh, when I, once I discovered Tmux, however, that became like almost immaterial because Tmux is sort of like, as you probably, while you brought it up, a tiling window manager. Uh, so I haven't really checked out many other window managers. Uh, when I switched back to Ubuntu, I thought, oh, maybe I'm going to want to do my own. I'm not going to like this Unity stuff. Uh, but once I full screen the terminal, it really doesn't matter. Like the handful of time that I switched back to the browser or whatever, it's just not that big a deal to me. It doesn't bother me. Another question from Kilo, why did you move away from Arch? So I discovered after several, several years that I was spending more time just trying to administer my Arch system rather than using it. That perhaps like I was simply not adult enough to be trusted with Arch Linux. I was cutting myself on it. Uh, I mean, that's kind of a silly way to put it, but I was spending more time administering than using it is really what it was. Um, it does let you do like whatever you want and you can set up anything. I had a good like minimalist environment that I thought worked well for me. Uh, but like then some update would change and this would break some other things. The, the deal breaker probably came when I was doing some video editing. I was putting together my TensorFlow uh, video series and to record the videos, I needed like a certain set of libraries. To edit them, I had to like back up I had to roll back one of my libraries every time I wanted to edit, which became a huge pain. And the editor crashed all the time. I never lost any work, thankfully. It always saved. Uh, but that got to be a huge pain. So I said, you know what? Ubuntu is like the Linux I started on. Let me go back and see how good it is, see if it's changed. And I decided that I like it. It's, it's easy enough. It's fully configurable as much as I want to install, uh, but it comes with like same defaults. And it was very easy for me to update my my compute tool script to say, hey, install things through Ubuntu. And a lot more things just work. There's still plenty of things that don't just work, like a lot of this machine learning stuff. Uh, but it's, it's not very painful, and I haven't had a lot of trouble with it. So I've been happy with the Switch. I, I don't knock people who use Arch Linux. It is a good resource, and it's a great way to learn how Linux works. So I think I learned a lot by using it for several years. And I learned that, uh, you know what? A lot of the defaults in Ubuntu are fine for me. Uh, I'm okay with the amount of bloat that it gives me. This is acceptable. Uh, someone else is talking about using Ansible for system configuration. That does, that might be something I have to check out. I admit, like, I have not checked out a lot of these things for setting up my environment. And I realized, like, setting up a shell script is, what was it, two or three weeks ago I was using CNTK and I was lambasting them for like, oh, they have a shell script to install this stuff. That is exactly what I have here. And this shell script is probably less, almost certainly less advanced than theirs. So Ansible, that might be something that I should check out. Uh, but again, this is installing your system, not something I do every day. So if I do it, even if I do it three times a year, uh, that's just, I don't get around to it that often. I have to look up, all right, well, what is this Ansible thing? What is this other thing? I had to spend that much more time learning the software to use the software rather than I just want to I just want to do some computing on my machine. I don't want to have to think about all the software. I want a nice abstraction layer 
where uh, I don't have to worry about these and I can focus on other fun things like the movie magic. That's that's what it is. I mean, you can say a equals seven, b equals numpy dot, a range uh, six, and you say, hey, print a plus b, and you're thinking that's a scalar plus a vector. That's not gonna work. NumPy does what you would expect it to do. So that's just kind of a cool thing. Depackage for the win using the Debian. Yeah, I, I, when I was working with Arch, I really wanted to have a meta package from the Arch user repository that would just install all the garbage that I want. And then I could have another like installer in there that would set up all the settings right. I haven't really looked at that in Ubuntu too much just because I don't want that many things. It's still relatively simple. As long as this shell script is pretty simple, I, I don't need to uh, wrap it around in some other library to make it all work right. But that's all that is. So that is essentially setting up and the most basic usage of the interactive computing workflow. Uh, we didn't go over like matplotlib and other stuff, uh, but those are things that you can certainly do. If you're interested in more of this, I have a couple other old videos on how to do this. Or again, I've got dvbuntu.github.io slash compute. Uh, you can check this out and it walks through several more examples and goes into a lot more detail on each individual element and uh, like why I think this is a good workflow environment. All right, clean layer of abstract, yes, abstraction layer. All right, I think that is all I got for tonight then. Sometimes it's easier or shorter than other nights. I wanna thank everyone for coming out as always. And I'm glad that we got this to work eventually. That is always a risk, even with my own, own tools. Uh, getting things installed, not always trivial. So, uh, thanks again. Have a good night. Stay safe in the data mines. Take care.